standing at any given time that you will be either completely in the snow or completely out of the snow. So watch that carefully. Not a lot of use for this today, although a lot of kids wish that it was. I haven't actually talked to any kids today because they're all still in school. So we're going to read some letters now that came into the station today. Just a lot of people excited about the weather event and wanting to know. This is from little Johnny from Corbett, Oregon. Johnny says, where does snow come from? Well, that's a fascinating question, Johnny, that has uh, foiled many a weatherman over the years. It's still really up for debate. That's a very scientific question. That's a very smart question, Johnny. Here's what I suggest you do. Go to Wikipedia, type in, where does snow come from? Wikipedia. Lots of explanations there. You find the one that works for you. There's a lot of truth out there. There's more than one, one truth when it comes to how do you make snow. But that was a great question. Okay, Macy and I took a break. It was freezing out there. Temperatures are dangerously flirting with the freezing mark. It would be similar to opening up a refrigerator door and standing within a foot for a prolonged period of time. Right, Mace? Uh -huh. And this is my camera crew, Macy. Hi, Macy. <laughs> doing a great job, doing a great job. Now, if you look at the windshield here, it's tough to tell, but you know when a snowflake hits as opposed to a raindrop, it has a splattering effect, and you'll see that all across my windshield right now. And again, what you're seeing behind it is the mouth to the gorge, the, the fabled gorge where slickery spots are everywhere. This crack in my windshield that spans the entire windshield actually is a result of the snow event we've had here in Portland. The sanding on the roads and then the impending shattering that took place. I'm lucky probably to be alive. The windshield should have shattered. Really should have shattered. So here's one from Rick Cranston from Canada. Rick writes, you people from Portland, Oregon, are a bunch of pansies. You wouldn't know a real snowstorm if an avalanche came and buried you. Well, I don't know about that, Rick. But I can tell you that I've been medically prescribed uh, a real phobia called crap a -banch. That's when you dream that an avalanche really does come and bury you, and you wake up to a not-so-nice surprise. So, good letter. We've been receiving calls, emails, texts all day long saying, where's the snow? Where's the snow? Well, we are live right here from the mouth of the gorge, the truck stops, and I just want to show you, this is a car parked right next to my car, covered in snow. So it's out there, people, it's out there. There's a cone on the road, there's a cone on the road. My gosh. Let's talk a little bit about safety and driving tips when you're in these kind of conditions. First of all, I want to contrast what it's like driving on a typical sunny day. You're looking good, feeling good, you're tan, got the world at your feet, versus a day like this in February when maybe you're not looking so good, maybe you're not feeling so good, you're pale, people don't even want to look inside your car. That's how I feel right now. But that's not the real danger. The real danger is the amount of precipitation falling on my windshield, vying for the attention of my eyes. A little scientific breakdown on how your eye works, it can only concentrate on one thing at a time. It's not like these new fancy cameras with multi-face detection. Fortunately, or unfortunately, in this case, the good Lord didn't make us with that kind of technology, and I don't see it improving anytime soon. So when I have all these things smattering against the windshield, vying for my attention, it comes back to really a focus 
a laser focus on my goal, which at the moment is to get home and use the restroom because I am known for having the world's smallest bladder. Cut. <laughs>